Draw. <laughs> Rusted junk. Oh, buddy of mine bought this. He's gonna watch the video, so I gotta be careful what I say. He knows what he did. This Toyota Tundra has 115,000 miles, five speed, V6, four wheel drive, looks real good, the price was right, it was too good to be true. What you're looking at is a giant hole in the frame because the power steering rack is supposed to mount to that hole. There's a big bracket that I just fell off after I sandblasted this thing, so I'm gonna weld it back together. And I'd talk a little bit more, but I got an appointment in an hour, so I'm gonna crank up the welder, turn on the gas, put on my mask, welding hood and I'll talk a little bit more about what we got here yep there's a bracket that goes around here just like that and it just fell right off junk don't buy rust belt vehicles it's so hard to find oh give me a second I forgot to get the hammer I gotta tap the steel it's so hard to find v6 five speed Tacomas or whatever the hell it is Give me a sec. So he searches far and wide. He travels the country. He's a, an on the road salesman. I guess you could say he's semi retired. But he travels the country, so wherever he goes. He can buy whatever he needs and drive it back to the north country where he lives in cow country. He's got a Honda CB450 that I drove the other day. It needs a windshield. I like wind in my face, but there's a limit to everything. An old twin cam 72 Honda CB450. So I'm gonna weld this piece of steel on and I'll show you why you don't buy rusty vehicles. I was watching DeBoss's garage briefly yesterday. He says after you weld, you don't leave the shop for a couple hours because, or a couple of minutes or whatever it is, because the place could be on fire. Uh-oh, this piece is a little too big. Hmm, well, if I start banging on this, half the vehicle's gonna fall on top of me. Yep, rusted. Hmm. I wonder if I should notch that a little bit. I can just get a little bit of weld up there. Hmm. I'm going to take the grinder and just cut a little bit of that steel off. cordless grinder. It's not as strong as a corded grinder, but you don't get the tangled cord syndrome when you're lying on your back. Of course, if I was really organized, I would have had this ground to fit. Maybe you're enjoying this, and maybe you're not. I guess worst case scenario, you just turn it off. All right, watch your eyes. I just want to get it started so I can, huh, I missed it completely. Just set off to hold the fingers there, it gets hot. Nope, fell off. So much for that. Try again. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. in a pickup truck with glass packs. It wasn't me. I ain't no stinking redneck. I'm too old for glass packs. Or maybe I'm not. Let's try tack this again. 
What a rusted piece of crap. Our steering line started rust started leaking. It's rusted away. Alright. Now I can run a proper bead. We'll weld the rack back on. Pretty. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Lying on my back. Got a little bit of power steering oil smoke. Starts on fire, let me know. Farting like that. Not farting. Speaking of farting, reminds me of old Farty, the 40 Ford that Pisser, the Hack and Pack Garage, was building. Whatever happened to him? I looked for him a month or two ago. He hadn't been on YouTube in six months. Where'd he go? He did a beautiful paint job on my Suburban. It's starting to get a little thin. It needs another paint job. And I don't know where he is. He's far away wherever he was. smoking enough. It's all the power steering oil, all the rust proofing. Too bad it was a little bit too late for rust proofing. I already rotted. Now can I weld the top of it? hit the hole. Oh yeah, she's roasting now. What do you like? Can I let it burn? She's got insurance, I hope. Hmm, water bottle, fire. That's it. Of course I'm getting steaming oil soaked water. Best job. Look at this side. Rusted. Yep. And on top of the frame, on the other side of the catalytic converter, there's a hole on the top of the frame. What a piece of crap. Look at this. Somebody rust proofed it, they said. I think it was a little too late. Rust. It's got new brake lines or something. 
All right, I gotta move my equipment over and put a bead over there. It's pretty hard to find a V6 five speed four wheel drive extra cab. So he found one, he said, whoa, it's cheap. It runs great. Yep. Except now that it's sat for the last year and a half, the rear brakes are seized. I had to smoke the clutch to get it up the hill. He said, look at it, it's got brand new tires. I said, you can buy those any day of the week. 500 bucks for four tires. You don't buy a vehicle because it's got new tires. And then he hooked up the battery cables backwards because the battery went dead. And speaking of battery, no battery tray. Nope, gone, no battery tray. A new one's 40 bucks and all the associated hardware is another 30 bucks. So he hooked up the battery, booster battery backwards and popped the fuse. He thought it was a computer, but we figured out that it's the fuse over here. So I tried to remove it, I couldn't get it out. And I fucking pulled on it. It's bolted in, seven millimeter bolt. Where is it? There, you have to remove the battery, the fuse holder from the box that it's in. 10 millimeter bolt on this side and a seven millimeter bolt on that side. What are they thinking? Who puts two different size bolts on? And who puts it inside there? Put the bolts down through the top. What are they thinking? And then it's leaking power steering oil after I sandblasted it. Rubber hose on the low pressure side. There's a pinhole right there. Psss. Dripping oil everywhere. So luckily it's got a lot of access here. I was able to get this pipe. It goes right down there. Where's that other hole in the frame? Let's see if I can show you why you don't buy it. Oh, I gotta make a mention. I've got a nice bracket holder, spring bracket, spring holder for my phone from my buddy MJM Computers in Houston. Thank you. Now if I can only find the tripod that came with the first one, that didn't fit. There's another hole. Where is it? Yep, yeah, down there. I don't know if I can get the phone in there. Yeah, right in the middle of your screen. Another hole in the frame, right behind the brake line. What a piece of crap. And the program to change Toyota frames supposedly is over. So, I guess it's my problem now. Luckily they engineered little covers for the horns. My friend's Honda Odyssey. Battery went dead yesterday, so we boosted it up against the garage wall. I told him all was back in it anyways. The horns go off, and the guy that was boosting it, the horns are so freaking loud, almost burst his eardrums. Yeah, four cam, big friggin' deal when you got a rotted frame. Big friggin' deal. Toyota Tundra. Chunk. How's that doing? There. I'm gonna weld the bracket back onto it, wherever that is. Get him back his rack and pinion steering. Where's that bracket? I sandblasted it, made it look nice and pretty. There's my trailer hitch, I gotta finish that up. Oh yeah, here we go. Yep, torn right off the frame. So I'll take off this. I'll cut that off. And uh, weld it back on. Looks like a big muffler clamp, but it's actually a rack bracket. Beautifully engineered. Too bad they used bubblegum tinfoil to hold it all together. Alrighty, we'll fix this baby up. Then we'll get my PMD, hopefully, and get that thing running. And a friend of mine is selling the motor, the 6.5 mechanical injection motor out of his dump truck. It had a 327, it's a 67, so hopefully I'll buy that. Maybe he'll even install it for me and I'll have a spare electronic injection motor. Oh, life by the lake, people paddling by. Would be nice, I gotta work. Some of us do have to, you know. Thanks for watching.